He's been preaching in different churches and different cities across this country. And he said something that didn't surprise me in the least. He said that he would leave those churches in his automobile, shaking his head. Shaking his head because he saw and he understood that pulpits and pews are in a mess all across this land. It sure is. That's the truth. And it's in all denominations, folks. Don't think it's not in the Southern Baptist as well. The church is a mess from the pulpits all the way to the back pews. If revival doesn't come, if revival doesn't come to this nation, this present generation is doomed. You know, getting people to come to a prayer meeting is worse than a dentist trying to pull somebody's tooth. Now I know that Second Chronicles 7 and 14 was written and spoken primarily for the nation of Israel, but they were the people of God. Today, the church is a people of God. That's right. Israel as a nation is still the people of God. One day, they're coming home. In the meantime, God has called the church to do his bidding. So 2 Chronicles 7, 14, I know it was a word from God for the nation of Israel and it's preached from many pulpits across America today and I believe that it still has merit for the people of God. It has merit to the church who today is the people of God also. If my people, my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Amen. Folks, we need forgiveness. And who can say that we need some healing across this country? We do. A lot of it. If there was ever a time in American history that she needed God, it's in this day and age that you and I are presently living. Pulpits and pews need to be set on fire with the power of God all across this country. The church needs to get back to the power of God and to the Word of God. There's too many preachers attending too many seminars and cemeteries. There's too many preachers so busy with meetings and waiting tables they don't have time to bury their face in the Word of God and get their head down between their knees and seek the face of God. Amen. Sure. This is the 
land that you and I are living in has fallen, folks. And it stands in dire need of a healing. You know, I, I am, I'm, 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 I'm grateful. And I'm excited. And I'm thankful that the president last week signed an executive order that restrained what's known to the church as the Johnson Amendment. Which means that the IRS is now limited. That they can no longer go after churches and Preachers standing in the pulpit who have the boldness and the courage to stand against their morality and wickedness in the government and call sin for what it is, sin. Hallelujah. That's the truth. Amen. Preachers in this pulpit haven't always been afraid to call out corruption in the government. But today they cower over in the corner. They're afraid to go there. They're afraid to offend anybody. True. They're afraid they're going to upset the IRS going to come for. God's not giving us a spirit of fear. I can lawfully now say to you this morning that I am glad that Hillary Clinton is not the president of this country who would have only continued to lead the nation down a pathway of destruction. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. I rejoice in the fact this morning that a political party, a major political party in this nation who determined to throw God out of this country is no longer in charge. Amen. And I don't apologize for it. Let me say something to you this morning, folks. The president is incapable of bringing Revival to the church or bringing revival to the nation. It's true. The people in the churches. The House of Representatives is incapable of bringing revival to the church and the nation as well as the Senate. They're incapable of bringing revival to this church and to this nation. Revival can only be brought by the church of the living God. Amen. By God's people. Amen. Via, via pulpits all across this country. How many of you who live here in Florida, especially here in Tampa, how many of you were glad to see a little rain this past yes. week? Amen. I was on the internet talking about it. Folks couldn't believe. Woo! They, they, they're happy that it's raining. You know, some folks, they can't even get out from under the water across the country. It's raining so hard. Yeah. It's been bone dry here for what? Months? Exactly. Yeah. Somebody said they've never seen a bunch of folk who are so happy to see it rain. Exactly. My neighbor, you should see him. 93. Been, been bone dry for a long time. Yeah. Grass was brown everywhere. You wouldn't even have thought it could have never turned green again. But God it back. And so while we have been experiencing a bone dry drought here, there are other parts of the country that are yeah. flooded and underwater. Do you know that floods and droughts have something in common? Floods and droughts. In this book, they were both the judgments of God. 
Amen. He controls it all. Both. In the Word of God, they were the judgments of God. That's the problem, folks. Our nation is under the judgment of God. And God has called the church. And God has called the pulpit to stand in the gap. We've been given the responsibility to call both the church and the nation to repentance. You say, what is revival, Richard? What is revival? Leonard Ravenhill said this. In revival, God is not concerned about filling empty churches. He is concerned about filling empty hearts. hearts. That's right. That's the truth. That's the truth. Because of the Spirit of God. A.W. Tozer said this, In some circles, God has been abridged, reduced, modified, edited, changed, and amended until He is no longer the God whom Isaiah saw high and lifted up. Philip Brooks said the religion that makes a man look sick certainly won't cure the world. Amen. Curtis Hudson said many a person fails in life it's true. because of too many things. The secret to success to is finding the one thing God appointed thing and giving it Turn back to your God. best shot. Amen. What has God called you to do? What has God called me to do? You do it. Figure that out and do it. Not only do it, but give it your best. I would say to you this morning, folks, if we desperately need anything, we, we need God to hear our prayer. That's the truth. That's the truth. Not only do we need God to hear our prayers, we need to hear from God. Amen. do what He tells us to do. Folks, I don't want to live the rest of my life not hearing from God. I want to hear from God. Amen. And I say to you this morning, it's going to be, today is a new day for this preacher. I've made a determination that I am going to seek after God as I have never sought after Him before. Amen. I have decided that whether God give me a few more hours, a few more days, a few more weeks, months, or a few more years, I want to live every minute of it for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. All of us ought to think that way. I need more than dead, dusty road religion. We all do. Remind me of yesterday, last night, I was watching the ball game between Toronto and the Rays. And Evan Longoria comes running from third base into home plate, and he slid about 10 foot, and dust went everywhere. <laughs> and the umpire called him safe. Toronto didn't like that, and so they, they challenged the call. But there was no way. No way that the call could be reversed because those looking at it couldn't even see the plate because there was so much dust everywhere. Listen, there's so much dust 
in the church today that folk can't see God. Amen. Amen. Folks, we need a fire in our belly. We need a fire in our belly. The church needs a fresh anointing from on high. The church needs a spring of water to rise up within us like a mighty river. Amen. That's what all of us need. That's what every one of us as individuals need and that is what the body of Christ desperately needs in our day. God's encouraged me this past week, unless you haven't done it. Amen. God encouraged me this past week. Something's been stirring on the inside of me. And I promise you, it's not the devil. There's only one cure for the judgment of God, and that's the mercy of God. There's my introduction, so you probably got an hour left. <laughs> I want to say to you this morning, I've seen a cloud. I've seen a cloud in the distance headed for the land. I see a cloud in the distance. It's coming. Headed for the land. It's been a long time coming, folks. The first thing I want us to understand is this. The church and our nation needs an abundant outpouring of spiritual rain. America and her churches have been in a drought for years. There's only one way we're going to see and get the rain. That is, we're going to have to do what God says do. Amen. Yeah. And what does He say we have to do? He says we have to humble ourselves. We have to pray. We have to seek God. We have to turn from our sin. And just perhaps, we could all use a little fasting. That's true. Amen. Everybody here. That wouldn't hurt most of us in here this morning. No. Probably save our lives. What did Elijah do? It says Elijah got on his face before God. That's what you and I need to do, folks. We need to get on our faces before God. Verse 42 said, Elijah put his face between his knees. I say to you, there's no better place to pray than on your knees. Amen. See, when you get on your knees before God, you're humbling yourself before Him. We need to get down on our knees as God's people and we need to pray for an outpouring of spiritual rain. Spiritual rain that will get a hold of God's people and have an impact upon this world. The church and our nation needs an abundance of spirit.
spiritual rain. I've seen a cloud in the distance headed for the land. Secondly, this morning, the church has seen no spirit filled clouds for a long time. Let me say that again. The church has seen no spirit-filled clouds for a long time. Paul said over in Ephesians, Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. We've got too many Christians today drunk on wine. By the way, Kimberly, we still don't serve real wine. <laughs> How many of you here in Florida have found yourself when you go outside, you're looking around and you're looking for a cloud? Amen. Miss Dan and I were talking about this just a few days ago. We go out and we see clouds, but and it may be a little bit dark, but what was it so bad about those clouds? They were rainless. They were rainless. <laughs> it's like the skies were filled with rainless clouds. And they were. And they just roll right on top. <laughs> we were looking for some clouds. Why? Because we were hoping for some rain. For weeks, we've seen clouds, but they were rainless clouds. Elijah's servant, he was sent out looking towards the sea. Elijah sent him out to look out towards the sea. What was he looking for? He was looking for a cloud. But he came back and he said, I saw nothing. I saw nothing. Folks, I believe God called me 37 years ago and for 37 years I've been looking for a cloud. Amen. Elijah told him to go back seven more times. And on the seventh time, he saw a little cloud arising out of the sea. Folks, it only takes a little cloud for God. Make a Amen. big storm out of it again. Yeah. How many of you? Brother Gleaton, 89 years old. How long have you been looking for a cloud, brother? Oh, several years now, maybe 20 years maybe or more. You've been watching for that cloud. You've been expecting God to do something. Yeah. I've been looking for a revival. <laughs> How many of us in here this morning, we've got lost family members dying and on their way to hell? Exactly me. How many of us in here this morning have family members who are backslidden, who ought to be living for God, but they're in rebellion? How many in here have children and grandchildren living in rebellion against God, don't want to have anything to do with God, don't want to hear anything about God? Oh, I say to you this morning, just hold on. Amen. Just hold on. Because there's a cloud in the sky. Amen. And I dare say that this preacher is not the only preacher across this country that's beginning to see that small cloud. Headed for land. I 
want you to be encouraged this morning in the Lord. I don't believe God's finished yet. Amen. No, he's not. The church has seen no spirit-filled clouds for a long, long time. But I've seen a cloud in the distance headed for the land. Last this morning, it's time to seek God. Amen. It's time to call in the clouds. And it's time to expect the rain. Folks, this is no time in history for the church to be playing church. Brother Gleaton and I had church this morning before any of the rest of you got did, didn't we? We're all about the oven. I don't want to be in the oven, do you? I mean, I remember that little saying as a child, patty cake, patty cake, baby, little man. Huh? Throw him in the van. <laughs> Church been playing patty cake for too long, folks. You don't want to be in that oven. That it's oven. time to get down to business with God. Amen. I've had enough dusty religion. I've had enough dead orthodoxy. It's time to seek after God. Amen. Amen. It's time to do whatever it is God has called each of us to do. Charles Spurgeon said, Do what the Lord bids you, mm -hmm. when He bids you, where He bids you, as he bids you, as long as he bids you, and do it at once. Mm -hmm. How many of you know what a procrastinator is? Mm -hmm. Procrastinator says, I'll do it tomorrow. No way. And it never gets done, because okay. tomorrow never gets here. Mm -hmm. It's time for God's people to stop procrastinating. Exactly, and do it. It's time to get down to business with God. And just like the rest of the churches across this country, you and I need a spiritual rain. It's not going to come unless we do what God bids us to do. Amen. I challenge you this morning to make a fresh commitment to God. I challenge you to make a commitment that you're going to seek God like you've never sought Him before. You know, Jesus said, if we seek, we'll find. Perhaps mm -hmm. it shall be given unto you. Mm -hmm. I challenge you to get in God's Word and to get on your face before God as never before. I challenge you to commit to whatever God leads you to do with regards to a time of fasting. Whether it be put away one meal or whether it be put away 40 meals. Desperate days calls for desperate measures. Mm -hmm. We're living in desperate days. We're living in a desperate time. God. God and His people are the only hope for this generation. Don't give up. It's 
time to seek God. It's time to call in the clouds. It's time to expect the rain. I've seen a cloud in the distance <coughs> headed for land. J.C. Ryle said, let us seek friends that will stir us up about our prayers, our Bible reading, our use of time, our souls, and our salvation. Amen. How many of you in here this morning are longing to see God do something? I wanted to see it for 37 years, folks. I want to see folk, lost folk, coming and crying out to God for mercy and grace. I want to see God's people come to that place where they say, Jesus is all I want and all I How many of you this morning are willing to make that fresh commitment to God? Maybe God's calling you to make a commitment to this body of believers. Whatever God is bidding you to do, do it. Don't say no to God. It is a dangerous thing, folks. Whether we be saved or whether we not be saved. Oh, we, we can't lose our salvation. But it's a dangerous thing to say no to God. If you don't believe that, you, you go home and read the book of Jonah this afternoon. And you take a good look at what happened to Jonah when he said no shot. I said no to God for 10 years I ran to the heart of a man to run. He ran down, down, down. Remember? And I suffered the consequence. One consequence after another. And it didn't end up proof of it. Because I was like that prodigal son. We ended up in the hog pen, slop and slop. And I found myself ready and willing to do whatever I had to do to get out of that hog pen. Now that's a good place to be. Because that's when God can take you and clean you up and put you on the right path. Amen. You hear this morning, you need prayer for any reason. I don't care what it is. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord? You want to make a fresh commitment to the Lord? You want to say, Preacher, God bidding me to do something, pray for me? Then God will help me do it. Listen, God doesn't call any of us to do anything that He doesn't enable us to do. It. Exactly. Yeah. If God's called you to do something, He's put the power and the capacity within you to do it. You need prayer for any reason you come this morning as we sing this closing hymn. If you want to just come and pray this morning.